When it comes to Dell's Latitude series, they are not made for general consumers like you and I. However, we can still buy it a la carte because you know Dell offers it on their website and there are good reasons to buy it this way as well. Mostly because these laptops have special security features like Intel's V Pro and also Dell's excellent warranty service and also a lot of customizable extended warranty coverages that you can pick and choose on Dell's website. But before we get to the extensive warranty coverage and whatnot, we need to know if this laptop is actually good or not. And in this video, we aim to provide you with the answer to that question. If you're familiar with Dell's XPS series of laptops with its redesign since 2020, then you will immediately recognize the shape of this laptop. It looks very similar if not identical to the XPS 9500. However, instead of using a full metal build, the Latitude 9430 has a mix of materials but Dell didn't list what kind of materials they use specifically for this laptop. So I'll just tap on the laptop for you to listen. One thing I can confirm though is that the bottom plate of this laptop is coated with a rubbery soft touch material which is an interesting choice as this can prevent the laptop from sliding around. However, I'm not sure if this coating will eventually become sticky over time because other soft touch materials, yeah, that will happen. Once we open up the lid, we were presented with a rather familiar look. This is a 14 inch screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 which is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and the bezels are just as thin as the XPS series and it doesn't have a touchscreen here so that's why it does look a bit different. You can however customize it with a touchscreen on Dell's website. The screen is indeed excellent as it covers 100% of sRGB color gamut with a very low Delta E number and its maximum brightness is also slightly above 500 nits which isn't quite enough to be used outdoors during a sunny day but it's definitely better than many other laptops in the market. We can also connect the laptop with an external display using either a HDMI cable or USB Type-C since it does come with Thunderbolt 4 with DisplayPort Out mode. There are actually quite a good amount of ports here, though I would like to see a USB Type-C port at the right side of the laptop so I can plug the charger on either side of the laptop. One thing I have to at least mention is that the audio issue that I have encountered. I tried playing some music on YouTube previously and then it says audio renderer error and it just wouldn't play any audio at all. There was audio from Windows itself though, but I have no idea what was going on. So I tried Googling around and I found out that the Intel SST audio was causing this issue. I had to reinstall the driver entirely and then after a couple of restarts, it's working. Then the keyboard, it actually boils down to your personal preference because I would prefer something with lesser actuation force. The travel distance per key is surprisingly deep and combined with the stiffer keys on this laptop though, yeah, it's quite fatiguing to type on. For me personally, I would prefer something a little bit lighter in weight so that you, know, you can touch type a lot better. And this keyboard also has a backlight which you can tune the brightness as well. The trackpad works fine, though the palm rejection could have been better as I was using this laptop with an external mouse with my left hand placed around the WASD keys, then I can see the mouse cursor started jumping around. In terms of performance, at least here in Malaysia, we have the Intel Core i5-1245U V Pro version alongside with the Iris Xe integrated graphics and 16GB of LPDDR5 at 5200MHz and also 256GB of SSD storage. The performance is quite... I don't know how to put it, but try to summarize it for you guys. The booting up speed is very quick, but once you get into Windows, you cannot immediately start to use it. It will still take some time to load everything else in the background, particularly the new Intel Arc Control driver for the integrated graphics because after Windows pops up, you still have to wait for like a good 10 seconds before the Intel Arc menu pops up. Once everything is loaded, the speed is actually quite decent. My usual workload of web browsing with Spotify and a bit of YouTube works great. 
but the fan will always be audible and I presume that it's actually because the processor is working quite hard. There are a few special Dell Latitude features like the Dell Optimizer and they give you an option to enable something called presence detection and we also have a privacy filter that will automatically censor everything on the screen when you know someone is looking at your screen other than you. There is also yet another presence detection feature that automatically sleeps the laptop when you are away and then wakes up when it detects you. Combined with Windows Hello, this is actually a very convenient feature since you can just go near to the laptop, then it automatically wakes up, scans your face and unlocks at the same time. This laptop also has something called the Dell Safe BIOS which essentially is a way for us to compare the BIOS that is on this laptop with Dell's master copy BIOS on their server and this is great if you want to protect your laptop from any sort of attacks or tampering via the BIOS. As for the upgradability of the laptop, well, there's really nothing much you can do. I think it is using an mSATA SSD out of the factory, but there is yet another SSD slot right beside it, which I think is an M.2 2260 slot. I cannot confirm it, but from the looks of it, it is a 2260. Nothing else can be done on this laptop to upgrade it though. And I also want to have a look at the battery size here because as you can see, yeah, our version here is using a 39.7 watt hour battery and to put things in perspective, our usual workload lasts for about 3-4 to four hours, that's it. But that doesn't matter since Dell's website has a minimum battery capacity of 60 watt hours and that should last for about 5 hours. Either way, this laptop starts with the price of 10,449 ringgit. The price is obviously very high, but it is made for enterprises and for those who need security and the best support you can get because downtime means revenue not generated. There are a bunch of customizations that you can choose on Dell's website and one of them is to add a 4G modem inside your laptop so you can put in the SIM card and work anywhere. You can also add the duration of the pro support and next business day on site service to the exact number of months that you want but it is capped off at five years maximum so that's all we have to share with you about this laptop it's an interesting laptop for sure but again it's a latitude it's mostly for enterprises even though we can just order one from Dell right now it comes with a lot of features that the average consumers would not use and do not need so that's it that's all we have to share with you. Yay. Bye.